In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix timing issues using the various audio snap tools. We'll look at how to make manual changes to a single track, and then a couple of ways to change multiple tracks while maintaining phase relationship across those tracks. Then we'll look at quantizing tracks to the tempo grid. To assist me visually lining up transients, I've turned on the aim assist, which can be done by pressing X. Let's start with a simple example and look at some simple timing changes just for tightening up the odd note on a single instrument track. The track we're going to be looking at is from a DI bass recording, so there's no bleed of any kind. No need to worry about phase issues. There's a point in the project here where the bass guitar is slightly off from the kick, so let's have a listen. As you can hear, the bass is a little in front of the kick, so let's adjust those notes. First I'm going to split the clip, so I'm only affecting the area I want to affect. I've already inserted markers to make life easier for myself. Next I'll select both tracks, then holding the control key, select audio transients from the edit filter. Now I'm going to make sure that the snap to audience transient markers and the landmark settings are set in the snap module. Right clicking brings up that preference. You can see audio transients and markers already selected. Now to move the bass guitar, all I need to do is click on the relevant transient and drag it into position. Remember it's possible to multi-select and hold the control key down to move them proportionally. Alternatively, they can be multiple selected and moved together. Now let's have another listen to that. There's some artifacts there, but the timing's much better now. So now I select the clip and bounce that clip down. And let's listen to it bounced. Okay, so far so good. Now let's look at something a little more complex and adjust multiple tracks where phase will be an issue. Here we have a kick drum and snare drum track with a couple of overheads. The snare and kick will both be audible in the overhead tracks, so it's important that when adjusting a transient in one track, we adjust the same transient in all tracks to keep the tracks phase relationships. If we don't, there'll be phasing issues introduced. For example, if a snare beat is heard in the overheads and we move the snare in the snare track but not in the overheads, then our phase relationship will be changed. This is what we want to try and avoid. Audio Snap has tools to make that relatively easy. The first thing to do here is to select all of the tracks and then change the edit filter on one of them while holding the control key down to Audio Transients. From here, there are a couple of different ways to achieve the same result and we'll look at both. The first is to make sure that all the tracks are still selected. Call up the Audio Snap palette by pressing A and reduce the threshold setting all the way down to zero, which will show all possible transients and any snare or kicks in the overheads will have their own transients as well. I'm going to zoom in slightly so you can get a slightly better view and move the Audio Snap palette. Now when I double click on a transient to select it, the matching transients in the other tracks are also selected. This is because Sona is selecting the transients on other tracks that fall within a preset window of time around the transient we double click on. The default window is 50 milliseconds, which means any transient within 25 milliseconds of either side of the double click one will be selected. This setting may be enough, but may need increasing, especially if you have room mics on your drums. If it does need changing, open the Audio Snack properties and you're looking for the pool transient window. I'm going to increase mine to 100 milliseconds anyway. Then click on OK. Once the transients in each track are selected, they can be drag moved in exactly the same way as we did on a single track a few moments ago. The second method is slightly different. First we need to make sure that the overhead tracks and any room mic tracks are the only ones selected. And now we need to disable all transient markers. To do that, we right click in the clip area and from the context menu, select Markers Enabled, then right click on a marker and select Disable. Then deselect the overheads and select the individual drum tracks. I only have a kick and a sneer here, but toms and hi-hat tracks would be included if there were any. Now I'll check that the threshold is reduced to 0 dB, 
and if you wish you can filter by resolution. That will reduce the transients to that musical time frame, but I'm going to leave it on all. Now I'll add the two overhead tracks to the selection by holding the control key down and clicking on their numbers, and then right click over one of the clips and select Merge and Lock Markers. This will copy all of the transients on the regular drum tracks to all of the drum tracks, including the overheads. I make sure that all the tracks are still selected, and once more, click and drag on any transients that you wish to move. Remember, double clicking selects them in all tracks. The corresponding transients in the other tracks will follow any movement made on one of them, thus maintaining the important phase relationship. Not only can we adjust the timing manually, but we can do that automatically using the audio quantize function. We discussed the principles of quantizing in the MIDI editing video, and this is a similar principle, but it is audio transients instead of MIDI notes that are snapped to the beat markers. Quantizing can make tracks sound a little robotic though, which may be the effect you're after, but there are also ways of keeping some of the human feel when quantizing. There are several things that we can quantize audio to. It can be quantized to an existing clip, to the project's time ruler, to a groove file, or a groove extracted from an existing track. We're going to quantize these drum tracks to the timeline. To do this, we need to extract the tempo map from an existing steady clip after we've checked its clip map. I demonstrated how to do that in an earlier video, so I won't repeat it here. The resulting quantized drums will still have the live tempo feel with any drift that may exist, but the timing will be a little tighter. Note that the quantized process itself can take some time to complete depending on the material. First thing to do is make sure that all of the track's edit filters are set to audio transients. At this stage, if it hasn't already been done, we need to go through the tracks and make sure that all the transient markers on the tracks line up correctly with the transients. Again, on this example, I did it early in the clip map editing section. Now we need to make sure that all of the room mics and overhead tracks have their audio transients disabled using the method that I showed you earlier. Now select the snare drum track and check its internal clip map is set correctly. Then I'll set the filter resolution to eighths so that they are the only transients showing. Now I'm going to select all of the drum tracks, then choose the merge and lock markers option again. Once that's done, I'll open the clip inspector and turn off the clip block. I want to be able to move the clips. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to click on the split a beat button, which splits all of the beats into clips. I'm doing this so that when I quantize, the clips are moved and not stretched. This will help maintain a natural sound. Next, I need to make sure that all of the clips are selected by pressing Ctrl A and then click on the Quantize button, which will open the Quantize dialog box. From here, I can change the settings to get the results I want. I'm going to make sure the resolution is at eighths. MIDI start times will be ignored. That's because there's no MIDI data in this selection. I'm going to check audio clip start times as I want the clips to move. Note that audio snap beats and audio clip start times are mutually exclusive because I can't snap to both at the same time. The strength setting determines how close the notes are moved to the grid. I'm going to set this to 85. The swing setting I'm leaving at 50. The window setting determines whether notes at some distance from a quantized point are ignored or not. The setting of 100 will include all notes. The setting of 50 only gets notes that are within half the distance from one quantized point to the next one. Think of it as a sensitivity control. The lower the figure, the closer a note needs to be to a quantized point before it's included. I'm going to change this to 75. Offset will apply a positional offset away from the grid. Negatives will be before and positive after. The auto crossfade option will automatically crossfade any audio clips that overlap or have gaps. This will stop clips and pops on moved clips, and we need this checked. The crossfade figures the length of the fade, and the max gap is the widest gap that we filled with a crossfade. We looked at this earlier when we covered fading. Once happy with the settings, you can save it as a preset for future use if you wish by naming it in a preset window and then clicking save. All that's left to do then is click on OK. Once that's finished, we should have a much tighter drum track that still have its tempo drifts in place.